like to call to order the March 9, 2016 meeting of the South Borough School Committee. Uh, first order of business is the annual public hearing on the budget. It's time for fiscal 17. <coughs> Thank you. Good evening. Uh, this is uh, the, sort of the final process in the approval of the budget for FY 2017 before our town meeting appearance. And this evening it is the public hearing where we share information regarding um, the line item for our FY 2017 budget. I'd like to begin by saying the South Grove Public Schools has identified its priorities for the FY 2017 budget. These priorities are included in the public hearing document. The South Grove School Committee is committed to providing an exceptional educational experience for all students in a cost-effective manner. It commits to a strong partnership with <coughs> parents, community, and a positive working relationship with other parts of the town governments in the development of the school budget. The budget priorities and the mission of the South Grove School Committee serve as guiding principles by creating a framework for discussions and decisions taking place throughout the budget process. The FY 2017 budget was voted and approved by the South Grove School Committee at its March 9, 2016 meeting. A copy of the FY 2017 School Committee voted and approved line item budget is available online through central office and distributed again this evening. I will be providing a summary of each of the budget subcategories by function code as part of this evening's public hearing process. Function 1000, District Leadership and Administration, the South Borough Share of School Committee, Superintendent and Office, Assistant Superintendent and Office, District-wide Administration, Finance and Administrative Services, Personnel, Legal Services, Administrative Technology, $562,326. Function 2000, Instructional Services, Supervision, Principal's Office, Building, Technology, Teacher Salaries, teacher specialist salaries, instructional technology, technology specialist, substitutes, librarian media salaries, professional development, textbooks, instructional materials, instructional equipment, general supplies, instructional services, classroom instructional technology, instructional software and guidance services, $10,353,163. Function 3000, other student <coughs> services, Includes attendance services, health services, transportation, cafeteria services, student activities and athletics, $785,917. Function 4000, operation and maintenance of plant. Custodial services, custodial supplies, heating, electricity, telephone, gasoline, water, sewer, maintenance of grounds, maintenance of buildings and maintenance of equipment, networking and telecommunication, Technology maintenance, $1,695,499. Function code 5,000, fixed charges, which includes rentals and leases, $4,100. Special education, function code 1,000, supervision, South Grove share of district leadership, legal services and administrative technology, $17,800. Function code special ed instruction includes the district share of supervision of director of student support services and assistant director of student support services, assistant to special education, office instruction, teacher salaries, professional development, textbooks, instructional technology, and psychological services, $4,387,012. Function code 3000, other student services, health services, and transportation, 692,000. Function code 4,000, operation and maintenance of buildings. Telephone, electricity, maintenance of grounds and equipment, 7,000. Fund code 9,000 includes programs non-public schools, $897,046. The total cost of this function code 9,000 is $1,466,000, which is offset each year by our circuit breaker grant re reimbursement receipts. This year, or in next year, excuse me, FY 2017, that $1,466,000 is offset by similar reimbursement funds from circuit breaker of $568,954. The total FY 2017 operational budget is $19,401,863. 
representing an overall increase of $492,863, or 2.61% over the FY 2016 <coughs> operational budget. Very good. Okay, we open it for public comment, I believe. Is there any public comment on the budget? Okay, then. I guess that's it for our public hearing, right? Yeah. With that, I will close the public hearing and we'll go into our regular monthly meeting, which starts with audience sharing. <coughs> Is there any audience sharing? Okay, then we'll move into new business. And I believe there is none at this time. So we'll go on to old business. Uh, first, which is legislative update. Christine, did you want to talk about the I, bill? I would, yes. We have um, our exciting event that we um, look forward to each and every year. And this year, we save the date, Day on the Hill, which is an opportunity for <coughs> school officials and school committee members to um, travel to the State House in Boston to meet with our legislative team to talk about issues that are relevant to our district concerns. And I know each and every year, South Grove sends quite a number of representatives. And uh, last year, um, we actually had an opportunity to sit, I think, with Carolyn Dyke and Representative Dyke for almost an hour. Um, we know that this is meaningful, a meaningful activity for us to engage in simply because <coughs> of the feedback that we've received from our legislators and the impact our conversations have had with them uh, over the years. Um, specifically, you know, last year we talked a lot, as we always do, about um, special education reimbursement um, and what are acceptable expenditures or what should be considered expect expected um, acceptable expenditures. But last year we talked a lot about the kindergarten grant um, and making sure that that was um, refunded or funded once again last year and, and uh, with great success that was, was able to happen. So. Um, it is a good time to meet with um, legislators and again, they also provide um, a number of workshops and forums to, um, to inform the public about pertinent issues. So it's a day well spent. This year it's um, April 26th and if you would like, we would be happy to register the contingent, or, but I think you can register it on your own as well. And I think we always carpool, so that's always an important part. Yes. <coughs> we, um, and I think if you're interested in having us register you, um, Cheryl Lepre is not back yet, but uh, Diane uh, and Nancy Bissett, our um, fill-ins, our um, backup team are doing an amazing job, so we just send an email and we'll be happy to do that on behalf of uh, everyone. There's also, um, we talked a lot about the Foundation Budget Review Committee the, earlier this year. There was quite a large packet of information that was shared. And it's something that has um, been discussed year after year after year. The Chapter 70 funding formula is um, quite frankly a dinosaur in terms of representation of true costs in today's um, educational environment. And um, a commission and a committee was formed last year and they did release, um, release their suggestions for improvements to that. And I believe um, there is a resolution uh, calling for full funding of the Foundation Budget Review Commission's recommendations and here is a synopsis of that um, recommendation for the committee to review and take up for consideration. Could be a very good topic for Day on the Hill, if not before. Well, it's also a topic that the uh, MASC, the Mass Association of School Committees, is pushing. As some of you might have seen, there's <coughs> a bunch of school committees across the state that have uh, signed on to this resolution. So mm -hmm. I thought we should consider it. We're going to check it out tonight, maybe next month. We can uh, take a vote on it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We actually will be meeting before the day on the hill. Yeah. Uh -huh. Might even be able to hand carry a letter. Speaking of letters, I got one today from uh, Carol Dyke's office, um, <clears throat> letting us know that she has signed on to a request uh, for an increase in the minimum aid increment for Chapter 70 education funding formula. Is uh, Hmm. A whole bunch of representatives uh, sent a letter to chairman of the <coughs> chairman of the Ways and Means, the Senate, and the House chairman of the Ways and Means, encouraging them to to, uh, to increase this from twenty to fifty dollars per pupil, which would be nice. So that was good to see. I think uh, another example of our efforts in speaking to Carolyn paying off. Mm -hmm. so. 
Anything else? Not for old business. That brings us to the superintendent's report to the committee, starting with the fiscal 16 budget. Before uh, we, we begin uh, this uh, section of the agenda, I do feel that it's important to share an update uh, in terms of um, the situation that has taken place within our district. Um, it's just about a week ago that I sent out one call to all the district users and certainly um, there was some information in the press and as we know sometimes they get it right and sometimes they don't uh, but there was a lot of information that was shared and at that time I did send um, I think it was March 3rd uh, a letter to all the district users and I did commit to providing information as that information became available so I'd like to just take a minute to address a couple things that I'm able to share at this point it is still very much an active investigation um, before this meeting, I was on the phone again with the DA's office. Uh, but we have moved very, very quickly um, on this uh, situation. Um, alleged embezzlement of funds. I, I think I just you know, need to state that because that's really what the charges were. It was reported in the press. And um, we have done so much in a short period of time to address this issue, and I'd like to share with you um, a little bit of an update. Um, I'm also hoping to put this out in a one call. Uh, to our community members so that they appreciate that um, we are uh, being very vigilant and very proactive as we have been since this information became known. So at this time, we do have a high degree of assurance that any monies that would, res would have resulted in a loss in fiscal 2016 will be recaptured as we aggressively are seeking recovery from our insurance providers. Uh, this is uh, first and foremost um, who we are working with and through, uh, but this is one of area of several uh, potential identified sources of recovery. There will be no impact on the FY 2017 budget as voted and approved by the school committee. We continue to collaborate with local and state police working with and through the district attorney's office as they continue to be very active in this investigation. Uh, I am in contact with our town administrator it is very important to continue our collaborative dialogue and again um, have had an opportunity to speak with uh, Mark Purple just yesterday to also reassure him that we continue that collaborative relationship. Our legal counsel continues to provide guidance and has assisted in recommending the services of several financial liaisons. Uh, last week when I became aware of the situation I reached out to our legal counsel and asked that we um, engage the services of what is known as a forensic accountant, someone who will come in and do a thorough and very um, detailed analysis of how the situation occurred and what we can do to um, move forward, uh, recover, and also to um, make sure that our district policies are the most stellar policies that we could potentially offer in the area of financial and, and um, budgeting. So we have engaged the services of John Sullivan, who is a forensic accountant with Melanson and Heath. Melanson and Heath is very well known and respected in the um, auditing world as I engage in many conversations with our state police and with my our insurance carrier and just a wealth of other um, individuals who have helped us through this process uh, continually. That is the firm they say, have you contacted? So uh, we have every confidence in, in the forensic accountant that we have engaged the services of. This process began last Wednesday uh, with a review of our files and records. Uh, it's part of a very lengthy and uh, very in-depth audit process. It is anticipated that this will take several weeks, um, but it's well underway. I've also requested um, to give uh, greater confidence and assurance to the greater community. Um, the, th the services of a third party oversight so that this individual or firm will provide daily uh, oversight of our tr financial transactions to just ensure full transparency and third party uh, lens as we offer um, checks and balances for our routine financial operations. That gentleman, spoke with him this morning, um, his name is John Crafton. Um, he is a former longtime business manager, but he's also a longtime executive director of the Massachusetts Association of School Business Officials. He has agreed to not only provide oversight, but I have also um, recently engaged his services 
um, as we will be conducting a full financial operations re review um, in all three districts, which includes reviewing our business practices for the purpose of determining statutory alignment processes associated with budgets, financial reporting, payroll and accounts payable, all cash management including budget and revolving accounts, written agreements between the school community and municipalities, and identification of our strengths, weaknesses, and recommended improvements um, in the areas of operations of the school district. He will work uh, collaboratively with our forensic auditor who is looking at this specific incident. Um, we want to make sure that we have a very global, holistic uh, plan for um, strength as we move forward, and I'm actually very much looking forward to the recommendations um, that he will offer. Uh, it will make us better than we are and stronger than we've been, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and we are continuing to look at um, making sure that we have um, checks and balances uh, with our accounts and with our financial institutions just to be sure that we have maximized um, everyone who could possibly be on our account so that we make sure we have continual oversight. Uh, the district attorney's office continues to be actively involved in this investigation. At this time, I am limited by what else I can share, um, but I don't want to share more to uh, potentially hinder the progress that we are making, which is rapid, um, nor do I want to share anything that would hinder recapturing of funds or pursuing the maximum criminal prosecution that might be coming our way or someone's way. Uh, any information that continues to come to light that can be shared will be shared and I will be sending this out to all of our district uh, members in the form of a district user in one call tomorrow. So I thought it was important to put that before you all uh, so that you can be reassured of two things. We are um, and continue to be expending from our FY 2016 be, uh, budget in the most diligent, um, resourceful way with maximum oversight, that our potential for recovery is um, high degree, that's the term I was authorized to use at this point, and that um, we have spent a lot of time, as we do each and every year, crafting a very educationally sound and fiscally responsible budget and this does not impact all the good work that has taken place by our administrators, by our school committee, by our town administrators and boards to make sure that the budget that will be before the school committee um, as presented by the school committee at town meeting in April is solid, financial practices are well in place and confidence restored in the great work that has been taking place in this district. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> However, I would also recommend to the committee that in not in customary fashion that we do not vote to approve at this point the financial report of February 29th, 2016, but instead we vote to hold that is the vote to hold the budget until the review of the findings of the forensic audit are in or known. Uh, I have every hope that that will be um, available to us by the time we meet again in April. This recommendation does not inhibit our ability to continue our routine business operations. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody want to make a motion to that effect? Well, do we actually need to move that we hold it, or do we just need not to make a motion to approve it? Right. Yep. Okay. That works too. Yeah. Yeah. I think we don't approve it. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. All right. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on uh, the fiscal 16 budget? Right. Let's move on to 17 then. Budget priorities, which have not changed. Have not changed. Yeah. And budget calendar, probably not has changed a little. Yeah. Just a little. Um, we did not meet with financial advisory this week, and so um, that's changed to our calendar. Um, I have, however, um, received a call from um, Janet Maney, and um, if possible, time is short before town meeting, but if it's possible for us to reschedule, and that's the will of the financial advisory committee, we'll certainly make every effort to do that. 
um, but she and I have had a chance to chat, and uh, Mark Purple and I also spoke a little bit about this. So I know they're trying to still get folks <coughs> in to meet with them. But we don't have a date at this we point. We don't have a date at this point, yeah. It probably won't be next week. Yeah. Well, Who knows? hopefully you'll be here. But okay. if you have a recommendation, a, 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 a hope for a date well, that well, you I, want I, to I, work I, I, on. I, 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 okay, well, we'll just let it, we'll let it well, yeah. fall where it Oh, we should know we did meet with Sam Starters. Yes, uh, yes the liaison to the school committee, and that I think right. went pretty well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. right. So we had we're somewhat up to speed. So. Yes. Right. By meeting with Sam, I think. Right. That was a good meeting. Yes. A couple hours good. well spent. Absolutely. In your packet is also a copy of the approved budget, which is really a more uh, I think uh, detailed line item of the public hearing uh, function code reading that I provided at the start of the agenda. Mm -hmm. So that's also in your packet. And up-to-date enrollments are also included in your packet as uh, we provide each each week, each month. No uh, no significant changes I at this point to report. But we continue to track our kindergarten enrollments. Mm -hmm. Mr. Do. Randall is very vigilant and diligent about getting uh, those students enrolled. So I know that's something we want to keep an eye on as we move through. I think we've gained five since we met last. Okay. So is, so is it 117 now for next year? 118. 118. Now, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, education and policy. I don't believe there are any at this time. Same with policy development. And or distribution. I'm sorry, can I just come back to the kindergarten? Sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, did you, are we saying 118 now? Uh, I see 117 on. Oh, the, it may not have, I think it's 118 now, but okay, it may not have been at the time that that was taken. 24. Yeah. But when, when this was, okay. It's hard to keep up with those kindergartners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there usually is a pretty good amount that even coming from this point forward, isn't there? Normally? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So in a traditional year, we would expect that that number would go up from what it is now. Typically between 10 and 15 from what we anticipate at this time of the year yeah. and the beginning of the school year. Okay. Well, the projection does keep creeping up and up and up, like almost one, every, one more every month, it seems like. It does, yeah, yeah. usually a couple yeah. more, yeah. yeah. And spring's a big time for people to move. It is, so right, it is. All right, personnel items, we do have a personnel report. We do um, a little combination of an appointment, and, uh, two leaves and two resignations. But that's also this time of year, and the notice is provided by staff. So the leave of absence, that means that they're just not coming back from the leave of absence. <coughs> Right. That's right. right. Well, Deb Lemieux is actually taking the leave from the, both of these are taking the leave from the positions that they had in the district to take positions, other positions in the di district. Uh, right. So technically they have to submit a leave of absence. Um, and this just gives them an opportunity to return to those positions if they so desire by contract. So right. we have to so note those. But both of them are still with us. Right. But right. the, the actual resignation, resignation at right. the bottom is somebody who is on a leave they of absence. They are not returning. And they're not has returning. decided not to return right. from their leave of absence. Right. May I ask for just a little expanded definition of what inclusion facilitator? Well, we're lucky Marie Allen's here. <laughs> uh, an inclusion facilitator is uh, an itinerant staff that goes around to the different schools and works with general ed teachers and special ed teachers in inclusion uh, practices and, and helping them develop curriculum. Okay, thank you. So one of them is moving into that position. Because that's yeah. Great thing is they both still stay in their district. Right. <coughs> Communications, still none at this time. Actually, um, I do have the district doings for February, and I particularly want to distribute them um, to give and to um, make note we noticed that they hadn't been distributed formally to the school committee. They've certainly been released publicly. Um, but I wanted to draw your attention to the last um, 
item on this, and that really is a shout out and a tremendous um, note of gratitude to our own Terry Newman. Most of you don't see her because she is behind the camera, but we see her at every meeting in multiple tapings. And I had the opportunity to attend this event. Um, I would say I attend many, but this was one of the most moving and celebratory events that um, I've been to in a, quite some time. Uh, Terry has been working on producing a um, celebration of the work that, or, or, or the dedication and commitment of some of our local veterans. It was an amazing presentation. Um, our own uh, Dan Kalenda from our select board was present. Paul Simo Simone Simino. Simino was also interviewed. And all of the veterans, or most of the veterans, were actually in the audience. Some were World War II. Roger, you were there as well. So you may want to also um, share some thoughts. I do. It was tremendous. And um, I'm going to triple that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Not only just a great um, documentary mm -hmm. that uh, you created, but it was uh, worried about the Make America Great kind of thing. <laughs> it was a great event. Um, the fact that the um, um, you know the veterans were there, and just kind of the just kind of the communication and the socializing of them afterwards, mm -hmm. it was really. Uh, Kind of one of the best nights I've spent in a long, long time. It was really almost an afterthought that I went. Okay, I had nothing to do. I think I'll go over, and it was. I'm so, so happy I went. It was a, um, what you put together was wonderful, and uh, again, as far as the documentary was concerned, and um, you know, I, I have a, you know, I have a son who's in Afghanistan now, and I sent him a uh, link. To that and an email about that. It was just uh, that moving to me. It was a terrific evening. Thank you very much for putting that together. I did speak to Mr. Mead and suggested to him that all too often our students are um, idolizing and um, identifying heroes by who they see in movies and on the news and on the sports fields, and that may be completely appropriate. But it's wonderful to be able to recognize and appreciate that the heroes are truly the people who live next door to us. And we don't always make note of that. So to have this part of our US history experience and to get to know that heroes are alive and well and we need to give them a thank you for your service, um, is, or anyone in public service, is just um, really what it's about. So, Thank you for making that happen. Very good. Sorry, I missed that. But you can catch it on YouTube because yes. the link is in the district. <laughs> <laughs> I highly recommend it. Don't use that. I'm going to watch it. Yep. I'm going to save it. The, oh, Mr. Martin knows me. Handing me things. <laughs> um, well, you know what? Why don't, why don't you share that up? Because I think you're going to be taking care of that. <laughs> So this Monday, we have our second um, keynote speaker series. We have uh, Mr. Alan November, who is a um, renowned technology specialist, um, who will be um, doing a keynote speech for the community um, at 7 o'clock at the Black Box Theater at Algonquin. And the topic of his, um, his keynote is Successful Parenting to Launch Your Child into the Digital World. So we're looking forward to that event, and community members are welcome to attend. And it is a free event. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Earlier in the day. So, yeah. Oh, I know. I'm asking no. sort of a question. So, um, anyway. Yeah, so the Superintendent's <laughs> Curriculum Advisory Committee will be working with Mr. Oh. No November from 3.30 to um, 4.30. Um, and then he will take a brief break, and then we'll put him back to work, and he'll be working with um, the school committee um, on um, current issues in technology. And having a discussion and dinner, um, and then he'll begin his keynote um, work with the community. And if that wasn't enough about technology, our tech director, Leo Brem, will start on Monday as well. Oh, good. He's Yay. been in and out of the, the district, um, visiting with us, um, getting himself uh, ready for his Monday arrival, 
and you know, we did share with him that not always do we get an international, well-renowned speaker when our tech directors <laughs> arrive, but on this particular occasion, it's a wonderful way to celebrate his arrival. I think um, everyone will very much enjoy working with him. He is truly an expert in the field, and he will be um, introduced to all the school committee members at the combined meeting next Wednesday. Great. So it's going to be a great day, and I, I suspect he'll be at all three meetings. Yes. I think he will be. Week. As a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> So action on minutes from February 10th. I do have some corrected <coughs> minutes um, as I distribute them to you. The corrections are still noted in red. Uh, we did catch another one. We missed a number five. So there was one. Uh, oh, four. Four or five. So we corrected that. Shout out and uh, great job to Diane Ajivas. She is pinch hitting as Cheryl Lepre is out and she enjoys taking minutes. Um, and she's doing a masterful job and they keep her on uh, doing just that. And so if you notice that they look a little bit defined um, or detailed, and we're so thrilled. And uh, I think Cheryl will continue to do uh, just that, but she has so many things on her plate and Diane actually loves taking minutes so uh, <coughs> that's what she told me that she, she did she likes she? to watch the meetings over and over yeah. <laughs> 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 and she recognizes some of the you know people out in the world now and they come up to her and say great job so she's actually enjoying it we hope it lasts a long time that enjoyment factor but we're happy to have her do that Good. you know she gets that in the minutes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. she is doing a great job Diane, yes put that in there Great job. <laughs> it was purposeful, so she'll continue to do it, actually. <laughs> All right. So we have a motion on the minutes. I move to approve the minutes of Wednesday, February 10th, 2016. South Coast School Committee Open League. As amended? As amended. Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. All right, bills and payrolls. I'm sure we have some. And agenda items for next month. Congratulations, the budget has been passed. I think that's probably a good agenda item. <laughs> <laughs> Recap of the um, town meeting. We right. Always to add. And probably, actually, we're. we're I, Note that we changed the date, right, for Southboro in April because of town meeting. So it will be a recap of Day on the Hill. I thought we were going yeah, before. Is I don't think that's right. I think that's the 13th. I think it's the 13th. I don't think we changed it. Because I think that's the regional day. Okay. Because they always go in the week after. I think the date's just wrong on that. Everybody pulls out their phone and just don't <laughs> Yeah, we should be good on the 13th. I think okay, we're good. fine on the 13th. So, uh, Can I amend my comment? How many is the yes. right. and, yeah. and the 27th is the regional. It's actually Wednesday, right? Because you go Tuesday and then you skip a day and then you go Thursday. But right. Right. Okay, right. so that's good. That's so it is the 16th. So it's the 13th. Yeah. That was town meeting last year. I think that might be region because it is region. Um, they always skip because school vacation week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're already there. <clears throat> Any other agenda items for next month? Well, there's time. Yeah. So. All right. And that brings us to audience sharing once again. Anyone? All right. And I guess we need a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. All in favor. Another record. <laughs> <laughs> that was public area. We honor off.